Joining us now, Budget Committee uh, Ranking Member and Armed Services Committee Member, Senator Jeff Sessions. And, Senator, we have uh, booked you today. We're going to talk extensively about immigration. But any reaction you have to this news out of Gitmo this morning? Well, it's very, very uh, disturbing, frankly. Congress has resisted this, refused to fund the money to close Guantanamo, or it would already have been closed and everybody released, I suppose. Uh, so this is uh, one of the things that got Secretary Hagel uh, terminated. He refused for six months to certify, apparently, these very individuals. Uh, he finally did, but uh, it had angered the political crowd in the White House, no doubt. All right. Well, we're going to continue to track this because uh, we're now, I think, in the region of about 135 or so, less than 140 there, and uh, many questioning whether uh, the president's plan is to simply release them until Guantanamo Bay uh, no longer has anybody living there. That's one way to close it. Um, we want to talk to you, though, much more about immigration. This is something that you have been sounding the alarm on for years now on Capitol Hill. We've seen the president take executive action. What are your greatest concerns about the reality of this? Because, you know, I've gotten here the, the White House's report on this saying uh, immigrants are job creators. They're going to have a positive impact on the economy. What are your concerns? Well, there are a lot of concerns. First of all, the president exceeded the laws of the United States dramatically. He basically nullified existing immigration policy in America and has enacted a policy, a new policy of immigration that Congress explicitly, repeatedly has rejected. Rejected in 06, 07, 10, 13, and 14. So this is a rejected policy that he's carrying out and it's illegal, unconstitutional, as he himself admitted on a number of occasions. So that's a big challenge. And secondly, we don't have enough jobs for working Americans. We've got the lowest percentage of Americans in the working ages actually working today, Shannon, since 1970s before women fully came into the workplace. So we, we have a difficult problem, especially for lower skilled workers. We need them working, not on welfare, not unemployed, not working just a few hours a week, but we need their wages up, which are down $3,000 per family uh, since uh, 2007. Uh, we're declining below inflation rates. So this is a direct disadvantage and harmful attack really on working Americans. So how do you rebut what the White House says is they're actually now bringing these immigrants into the taxpayer status, saying we're going to get them on the rolls, they're out of the shadows, they'll be contributing to the tax base. They point to the CBO, Congressional Budget Office, nonpartisan, saying based on the information the administration's given the CBO, uh, they predict that they'll have a net positive impact on the deficit. Well, some of the people will pay uh, taxes, but a huge percentage of them will be in that income level, the earned income tax level, or who have children, the child tax credit, which are basically checks from the federal government. So their incomes will be so low, they'll, they'll pay no income tax, as many millions of Americans do today, but they will get a check from the government for earned income tax credit or child tax credit. So it's going to cost money, really, in the long run. And people so, are. To, to be clear, you're saying that the federal government would be paying out tax dollars to people who are here illegally? Absolutely. Under this plan, the White House just said a few days ago that uh, if you pay into Social Security, you pay into Medicare, you get the benefits of the tax system. So they will not really be paying income tax because their level is below the mm -hmm. income tax level, but they will be eligible for tax credits, which are basically checks from the federal government. So I think that's a, a huge factor. And also remember that if, if you come into the country late and you work a number of years and you qualify for Medicare or Social Security, you benefit from those the rest of your life. And uh, most people that paying into Social Security take out far more than they pay in, particularly lower income people. So it might show, pop up and show in the short term an increase in Social Security income. Nobody's talking about the draw that they will put on to the Social mm -hmm. Security program in the years to come. And the solvency of those entitlement programs uh, is questionable at best, uh, even under the current uh, status quo. I want to ask I say you that? I, that's exactly correct. We are desperately trying to figure out a way to save Social Security, save Medicare over the long term. This will make the long term problem of fixing Medicare and Social Security much, much harder. All right, I want to talk to you about what's happening in the House. There's a lot of there are a lot of moving parts. There's a lot going on there. There's a funding bill uh, that could be introduced as early as tomorrow. Um, and there's this question about whether um, House leadership, House GOP leadership, uh, the Speaker John Boehner, needs Nancy Pelosi and several of her Democrats to vote with him uh, because there's some, there's some um, 
a break within the party about conservative Republicans who say they don't want to go along with this funding measure. They think it's not going to do enough to stop the president with regard to immigration and executive action. Um, is anyone, including House members, the public, is anybody going to have time to look at that bill, know what's in it, be able to address the concerns before it's up for vote? There's no way this huge bill can be addressed effectively. It's going to be thousands of pages passed right maybe Monday night in the House. Uh, what we do know is that it will allow the president to move money around and fund his executive amnesty program. We just discovered last week that they are renting a building across the river here in Bristol City, hiring a thousand people to process these identifications of illegal people. They'll be given a photo ID, a social security number, allowed to participate in social security and Medicare, and be able to work anywhere in America taking any job in America. And we don't have enough jobs today. So this would be 5 million people. So I was hoping and still hope that the House will put real language in that bill that con controls that. And some say it can't be done, but it was done on Guantanamo for years now. We have refused to fund and provide the president money to close Guantanamo because it would result in a release of dangerous terrorists. Or of bringing them back here. Or bringing them back here. Mm -hmm. And so Congress has done that, and uh, they can do it on this, and I hope it will. Look, the American people care about this. Uh, recent polling data showed it was the number one issue in this recent Louisiana Senate seat, 44 mm -hmm. percent, compared to Obamacare in the 30s. Uh, so this is a big issue. The American people will be heard sooner or later. It's not going away, and we're going to continue to fight for it. Well, as I'm sure you will be tomorrow, we'll be tracking this House bill minute by minute uh, and trying to learn all we can about it before it goes to a vote. Um, Senator, always good to see you. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, Shannon.